As much as I don't think there are any bad cases in the Ace Attorney series, it'd be a lie to say that some aren't better than others. In this video, I'll be ranking each of the 14 cases in the Ace Attorney trilogy from worst to best, starting with... The Lost Turnabout is the worst case in the series. I wasn't really bored when playing it per se, it's just a throwaway tutorial case. Not really much to say here. Even the culprit liking large bananas can't save it. Wow, two Justice For All cases in a row. I don't think anybody's surprised that I think Big Top is the worst non-tutorial case in the series. I've already talked about it at length in my third case syndrome video, which you can check out up to your right. And it basically boiled down to most of the characters being annoying as all hell, and one of the main conflicts being illegal. Again, I like the sympathetic villain, and the true pain theme, but it's still a chore to get through. Honestly, I don't dislike the first turnabout as much as some other people. It's a tutorial case that doesn't try to be more than a tutorial case. I respect that in games. Not much to talk about again. Moving on. Being another third case, I also talked about Turnabout Samurai in my third case syndrome video, but I'll recap what I didn't like again. The main issue really boils down to length. Why exactly did the trial have to last three days? What even happens on the second day? I can hardly remember myself. The case is very memorable at least, with Edgeworth helping out Phoenix for the first time at the end, but it's just so stupid that this trial is three days. Too much content for a filler case. For what it's trying to do, I think Turnabout Sisters does it pretty well. While the first Turnabout was created to introduce the mechanics of the game, Sisters exists to introduce the main cast, and it does it well. We meet Edgeworth, who I have a whole video on. He's a jerk, he lies, cheats, and steals his way through the trial. We meet Maya, our sidekick throughout the rest of the series. We meet Boobs. Uh, I mean, uh, never mind. We also learn the investigation mechanics. It's a solid enough case because unlike Samurai, it doesn't try to stretch the child to three days. Red White's a bad villain though, and we don't even get to take him down. Mia literally hands the evidence to us. We're now getting into what I'd call the good cases in the trilogy, starting with Recipe for Turnabout. I said this was my favorite third case in the trilogy in my third case syndrome video because of how ridiculous some of it is. It's a pretty memorable case just because of the villain, and the way Phoenix lies in order to trick him into admitting the crime is very unique. It's just a good, fun filler case with some colorful characters, and I say colorful in a good way, unlike Turnabout Big Top. The Stolen Turnabout is another pretty unique case in the series. Well, at least the first day. Having the first day not be a murder was pretty cool, and honestly, if the rest of the trial was trying to find out the mystery of who masked Damascus with no murder, I wouldn't have been so mad. I actually wish they did do that, to be honest. The culprit for this case was pretty obvious, but Luke Atme has one of my favorite names and breakdowns in the trilogy. He's also got a nice nose. There's also another important thing, the introduction of Godot. Wow, we've had three Trials and Tribulations cases in a row. It's almost like that game is good or something. Turnabout Memories is easily the best first case in the trilogy, and it's also the most important case in the game. It sets up everything we need to know for future cases. Bridge to the Turnabout really wouldn't be the same without it. Also, playing as Mia makes this case truly special. She's way funnier than Phoenix. We also meet Dahlia in this case, and it's apparent from the very second that she appears on screen that she's evil. At least for the player, not for the judge or pain. Like I said earlier, easily the best first case. This was a toss-up between this case and the next case, but Turnabout Beginnings just barely misses out on the top 5. We've now had 4 Trials and Tribulations cases in a row. The thing that held it back from being top 5 is the lack of investigation, but it's not like it isn't one of the best and most emotional cases in the series. Your client commits suicide on the stand. In this chapter, we get to play as Mia again, and we get to see who Godot was before the poisoning. We also see Edgeworth in his first ever trial, and get to see the first time Dahlia and Mia met after she mentioned they'd met before in Turnabout Memories. It's the perfect lead-in to Bridge to the Turnabout. Now that we're entering the top 5, I'm going to go more in depth with the cases and why they are where they are, starting with... Justice for All is by far the most inconsistent of the three games. When it's bad, it's pretty bad, but when it's good, we get the best second case in the trilogy. Reunion and Turnabout marks the true start of Phoenix Wright's character arc. That isn't completed until the last case of the next game. This case reunites us with Maya, who went back home to Kurain Village at the end of the previous game. We also get to meet Maya's cousin, Pearl Fay, and... Good lord, is she an annoying bitch. No. No, she's not, Eric. She allows for the sidekick pressure to be taken off Maya, not leaving Nick completely alone in this case, which does it some favors. 
Anyways, Maya continues her role as number one most defended defendant, and her and Phoenix share a pretty great character moment in the detention center, and we get introduced to the Magatama. The real first sign of innovation away from the first game, we learn about Cyclops, pretty much allowing us to find out a person's secrets. They waste no time getting it involved once Pearl powers the Magatama up. The Magatama really does spice up the investigations, and it was a great addition. Moving to the courtroom, it seems like we're pretty much screwed, especially since the prosecutor is... Von Karma? Not that Von Karma, but his daughter Francisca. We also learn that something happened to Edgeworth. Well, we technically already knew that because of another case, but we'll be touching on that shortly, but whatever. Francisca is about what we'd expect from Von Karma, only interested in winning and obsessed with defeating Phoenix. She also whips people, which some might like, but I'm not sure if that's legal to do in a courtroom. Speeding along towards the end of this case after Phoenix somehow manages to make it through the first day, I like how Phoenix tells Pearl to channel Mia at the start of the final day so that she won't have to see what happens next. The culprit of this case turns out to be this airheaded valley girl named Innie Minnie, or I guess it's Innie Minnie, or so we thought. You see, her and her sister Mimi Minnie got into a car accident due to the latter's exhaustion. Mimi died and Innie was disfigured so the doctors needed to do plastic surgery in order to make her look normal again. However, what they didn't know is that Innie was the one who died in the crash, not Mimi. So Mimi took up the guise of Innie. The exhaustion was caused by the victim in this case, Turner Gray, making this one of revenge. It also turns out that Mimi had an accomplice, Pearl's mother Morgan Fay. As I said earlier, this case marks the start of Nick's character arc, making one of the most important cases in the series. Rise from the Ashes doesn't really need to exist, but I'm sure glad it does. I say that it doesn't need to exist because the trilogy was just fine without it before, but it's still a damn good case with a lot of uniqueness in the mechanics due to it being written specifically for the DS and not the Game Boy Advance. Sure, sometimes the mechanics are stupidly annoying like with that stupid vase, but they definitely add more to the case than they take away from it. Now if I were to talk as in depth about this case as I did the last one, this section of the video would probably be like an hour, so let's get to the story now. In this case, we're introduced to an entire new cast of characters outside of Phoenix, Edgeworth, and the Judge. Our defendant is District Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye. Phoenix becomes intertwined with this case when her younger sister Emma appears at the office asking for Mia, but she's... Uh, dead, you know. Emma fills the young teenage girl sidekick role for this case as Maya is currently back home training. Emma also acts as a walking tutorial for the player so we can see all these new features. And also nobody taught her what homosexuality was. Anyways, we take Lana's case, and surprisingly, she's saying she's guilty. Well, that's a contrast to every other defendant in the game, except the previous one, but we're Phoenix right, damn it, you're not guilty, and we'll prove it. Like I mentioned earlier, this case is really long, so let's fast forward a bit. I'm already halfway to the words of the previous entry. Edgeworth is the prosecutor this time around, probably making the player breathe a sigh of relief. He's still not 100% a good guy, more like 95%, but he's definitely better than Von Karma. It seems really open and shut, Lana stabbed the victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, and we have an eyewitness. This is Ace Attorney, so she wasn't telling the truth. Speeding along, we meet Damon Gant, the Chief of Police. He's definitely the culprit. The player doesn't know how or why he did it, but he did it. Now that I've established that, we can move along to the why done it, because like I said, we'd be here all day if I've talked about everything in detail. This trial is intertwined with another incident, the SL9 incident. Here's a basic explanation of that. Serial killer Joe Dark was the subject of an investigation led by our defendant and Damon Gant while they were both detectives. During an interrogation, there was a power outage and Dark fled into Gant and Skye's shared office where Emma was. In the end, Neil Marshall, prosecutor for this case, and brother of one of the detectives on the case, gave chase and ended up dead. Phoenix realizes that it's no coincidence that almost everyone involved in that incident is also involved in this one. Now that we have background, we can talk about the end of the case. It turns out that Gant came across the three people inside the office unconscious and concocted a plan to blackmail Lana. He forged evidence to make it look like Emma killed Neil, also impaling him on a sword in a suit of armor, killing him. He then had Lana forge even more evidence so Dark could be convicted, and the fake evidence was then given to Miles Edgeworth, the new prosecutor for the case. Phoenix proves all this on the final day, leading to my favorite breakdown in the trilogy. It's revealed that Gant also killed Bruce Goodman, meaning that our client, Lana Skye, is not guilty for the murder. She's still arrested since she did all that other illegal stuff, but a win's a win. The only reason this didn't make it into the top three is length, to be honest. It's the longest Ace Attorney case to date, and sometimes it's a drag. It took me nine hours to finish it in my playthrough, and I knew what to do because I watched Slyzer's videos. Also, that damn vase. You'll probably notice that at this point we only have final cases left, which would be no surprise. 
Ace Attorney always manages to deliver in its finales. We'll start off with the very first finale case in the series, Turnabout Goodbyes. My previous video was on Edgeworth's character arc, and I explained the story there, so if you'd like more detail, then check that one out. I won't go into as much detail as I did with the previous cases because of this. The defendant for this case is our good friend Miles Edgeworth. This case really delves into his history and why he is the way he is, making it the perfect finale for what I consider his game. The villain for this case is his mentor, Manfred von Karma, and boy oh boy is he a good final boss. He shuts down Wright at every turn, even going so far as to tase him in order to conceal evidence. Even though I feel the stakes aren't as high as the following final cases, Von Karma definitely makes up for it. And going into it, I didn't really expect him to be the culprit behind it all. Anyways, it's a fantastic case that I don't think drags at all. The characters kept it interesting enough. Wow, it looks like we're going in order of last cases. It's almost as if they got better at making these games as time went on. Farewell My Turnabout has one thing on every other case on this list. Stakes. Never before have I felt so suffocated while playing an Ace Attorney case. I'm not going to go as deeply into this case as I did for Rise from the Ashes because I don't really need to. All you need to understand is that this case is the most important for Phoenix as a character. It makes him confront what being a lawyer truly is to him. For the whole series up to this point, he's constantly striving for the truth, and this is the first time where the truth can hurt him. You see, your client, Matt on Guard, is believed to have murdered a rival actor, so you of course take his case and try to defend him. But you see, he did do it. Well, indirectly. He hired an assassin appropriately named Shelly DeKiller. Even worse, DeKiller kidnaps Maya and threatens to kill her if he doesn't get on guard acquitted. For this trial, we're ready to face Franziska again, but as it turns out, she was shot before the trial began. Thus, a returning Miles Edgeworth will be taking over. I'm so glad they did this, because I don't think we would have won with Von Karma against us, and she plays a big role later. Moving back into things, we first believed that Ungard's manager did it, but it turns out that she didn't, and her tampering with the crime team is part of a much deeper story. After we get through that, the player finds out what I said earlier, that Ungard actually hired the killer to take out his rival. Ungard is pure evil, taunting right that he has to win an acquittal or it's Maya's life. This predicament really messes with Phoenix, and he feels horrible. Gumshoe and Edgeworth are both in the know, and Gumshoe calls right before the final trial, telling him to stall as there is still hope they can find Maya before the trial ends. In the final trial, we actually end up cross-examining DeKiller himself, and this is another thing that adds to the suffocating nature of the case. It feels like we're walking on a knife's edge the whole time. One wrong word and Maya's done. Right when things are looking grim, in comes Francisca von Karma with some evidence. And just another unique thing about this case, we managed to prove that On Guard broke his contract with DeKiller, meaning that Maya will be safe, and if On Guard gets acquitted, he'll quickly be killed. We managed to make the true culprit want to be guilty, like I said earlier, this case has the highest stakes in the trilogy, right up until the end it's super stressful. What a great case. Bridge to the Turnabout is the best case because it ties up all the loose ends we've had throughout the trilogy. Plus we get to play as Edgeworth, the ultimate fan service. Really, just look at the characters in this case to see. The victim, Misty Fay, mother of Mia and Maya, disappeared post DL6. The killer, Godot. The prosecutor who we earlier found out was involved with Mia. The accused, Iris, Dahlia Hawthorne's twin sister. The planner, Morgan Fay, Pearl's mother and previous accomplice in Justice for All Case 2. The other players are Dahlia Hawthorne, Pearl Fay, Maya Fay, Mia Fay, Miles Edgeworth, Francisca Von Karma, Larry Butts, and of course the protagonist, Phoenix Wright. This is like an all-star list of Ace Attorney characters. This case has so much packed into it that if I talked about it all in detail, this already really long script will be even longer, and this section will be even longer than Rise from the Ashes. So instead of going over the story in depth, I'll talk about what I like. Honestly, I should make a dedicated video for this case eventually. Playing as Edgeworth was great, and it was good to see Franziska again. I also like the way that they tie in what happened in the past cases, like Godot not seeing the ketchup in Recipe for a Turnabout leading to Nick realizing that he can't see red. I don't think they've done that before. Finally, putting an end to Dahlia Hawthorne was great, and it shows that Phoenix Wright is the greatest defense attorney of all time. How many lawyers have caused an exorcism in court by screaming at the spirit? Cross-examining Maya is not where I expected this case to go, but it was great with her trying to protect Godot even though she knows that he really did it. And then you have this truly legendary moment at the end.
Hearing Cornered Return was fantastic, as it is, in my opinion, the best song in the trilogy, and maybe even the whole series. And the best part of this case for me is Phoenix Wright finally doing it himself. He's come a long way since Turnabout Sisters. I also really like that unlike the other two games, the final showdown doesn't lead to some massive breakdown. I think they did this on purpose as Dahlia was the true villain of the game and her breakdown is far more intense. This is the number one case in the trilogy because literally every question I had going into it got answered. There are no loose ends. The series easily could have ended here, and it was supposed to. This is the end of Phoenix Wright's character arc. What a finale to a great series. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and like if you did like the content. It really helps a small YouTuber like me. Have a nice day.